in Dutch we call them pannenkoeken. <laughs> um, <laughs> like that's a great name. <laughs> yeah, um, <laughs> it's basically it's I would describe it as something in between crepes and pancakes. Hi, my name is Lev and welcome to Planet, the travel podcast where we give you inside tips and practical advice for cities around the world. We'll speak with experts and locals to help you make the most of your global travels. Today we're taking you to Amsterdam, the city of canals. First we'll give you a quick intro to the city, then we're lucky enough to have Amsterdam native Ava Bernfeld to give us the locals perspective. At the end we'll run through some money saving tips and other practical advice for planning your trip. So Amsterdam is personally one of my favorite cities. It's got some of the top museums in the world, paired with fun culture and interesting history. With its network of canals, Amsterdam is like a livable version of Venice. I always find it helpful to have a bit of background on the city before I go. So before we dive into the trip planning and the local tips with Ava, I'm going to give you the history brief. Here's a history of Amsterdam and the Netherlands in less than 60 seconds. Over 300 years, Amsterdam went from fishing village to global capital. The rise started in the late 1500s, gaining independence from the Spanish Empire, known at the time for expelling Jews and general religious intolerance. Think of Spain as an extremely overbearing parent country. So, like most teenagers, when the Dutch declared independence, they bent over backward not to be like their parents. And the Dutch have been a beacon of liberalism and tolerance ever since. In the 21st century, they even became the first country in the world to legalize gay marriage. Now, back in the 1600s, after the Netherlands was founded by William of Orange, people across Europe fled the raging religious wars to Amsterdam. This flood of diverse people and cultures made Amsterdam the trading capital of the world. The Dutch India Trading Company was booming, and the diverse oligarchy that ruled Amsterdam actually spent a lot of money on social services and infrastructure. It was the Golden Age. Well, not for the 10% of the population that was killed off by the plague, but for everyone else, it was the Golden Age. Rembrandt, Vermeer, and Howells were the painters that captured it all. Then wars against France hit the Dutch hard, as did World War I and II. But today, with a population of over 16 million, it has one of the highest per capita GDPs and lowest unemployment rates. In 2011, the OECD declared that Dutch people are the happiest on the planet. So the question you're probably asking yourself now is, how soon can I go? Well, Amsterdam is always beautiful, but if you have any flexibility, plan your trip around April or May when the famous tulips are in bloom and the Kuchenhof Gardens are open. The summer is pleasant but crowded. The winter is cold, but you'll find smaller crowds. No matter when you go, pack an umbrella. Now, to give you a geographic overview of the city, Amsterdam is the result of impeccable planning and is made up of a series of carefully dug out concentric rings of canals. In fact, around a quarter of the country's population and landmass are below sea level. How? They've just mastered dams, dikes, and floodgates. So much so, in fact, that the U.S. is taking a page from their book on post-Katrina New Orleans construction. In the center of the city, you have the historic district and the famous red light district. A few rings of canals south, you have the Museum Plain and many art museums in the beautiful Vondel Park. On the west is the Jordan neighborhood, which is fun and artsy. On the east is the Pipe, which is a little more quiet and residential. We'll get into which neighborhood to stay in later, but the city is generally compressed and walkable. Now let's get down to it. We believe tips from those who really know the city can make all the difference. So today we have Ava Bernfeld with us. She was born and raised in Amsterdam, attended the University of Pennsylvania, and is currently in medical school in Israel. Hi, Ava. Thanks for being with us. Hi. Thank you for uh, interviewing me. Yeah, it's my pleasure. So just to start off, what would you say is the most unique part or your favorite part of Dutch culture? I like that people are very direct. They will say they will say what they think, and there's no you don't have to like look around it. <laughs> That's perfect. Uh, we're here to get your honest opinion. Uh, so we were just talking about geographic overview of the city, and so where would you say the best views of the city are? Because I know that when I like travel, I like to get views of the city. Um, yeah, so there are actually a few very nice points. Um, they're in the center, most of them near the central station, so. One thing you can do, there's a um, hotel, Hilton Hotel. Uh, it's like Hilton Double Tree Hotel near the central uh, train station. Um, and if you go to their rooftop lounge, they have a we- really, really beautiful view of the city. Um, another good place is the central library. It's called OBE, O-B-E um, also near the central train station. Yeah, I think those two places are the best. You can see the best view. 
Oh, that's great. Sort of good inside tip that you might not know about. Okay, so let's get going on talking about the sites uh, in Amsterdam. So we're going to play a game called Grade It, mm-hmm. where I'm going to ask you to give a grade to each of the top museums, historical sites, and activities that will appear in most Amsterdam guidebooks. It's a pretty okay. comprehensive list of the top sites, so everyone listening should have a pretty good idea of what to see depending on the length of their stay. And so let's start with museums. First and foremost, the Rijksmuseum. It's Amsterdam's comprehensive art museum. Eva, what would you... What grade would you give to the Rijksmuseum? A plus. It has a lot of famous paintings that are very important to Dutch culture and Dutch history, including Rembrandt, Vermeer, and others. And it's it's just beautiful, all the art that is there. Yeah, I agree. It's just incredibly comprehensive, too. Uh, the Dutch art from the Dutch Golden Age, it's called the, the room in the museum is called the Golden Hall with all those paintings, so you don't want to miss that. But it's also just incredibly comprehensive of all of art history. It has some more ancient pieces and some more modern. And it's really just a great museum overall. So I would also agree an A-plus for the Rijksmuseum. Great. So uh, next we have the Amsterdam Museum, which is an overview of the history of Amsterdam for the most part. Uh, Eva, what do you think about this museum? So I haven't been there um, recently, but my mom has worked there uh, in the past, and it's supposed to be a really good museum. Like you said, it gives a good overview and everything, so I would recommend it. Cool, yeah. It has a great audio guide. The special exhibits some tend to be hit or miss, but the overall main exhibit that actually gives you the history is really thorough, and you really learn a lot. So I would give it an A-. minus. Next up, we have the Van Gogh Museum. Um, this is one of my favorites uh, in Amsterdam. Ava, what, what's your grade of the, the Van Gogh Museum? I would say A minus um, because the Van Gogh Museum is really it's really pretty and it has a lot of a lot of Van Gogh's art. But I think it's there's a lot of tourists that's, that come there and and you have to like stand in line and everything. And also compared to the Rijksmuseum, I think it's a little less like the Rijksmuseum tops tops all. So compared to that, I wouldn't I wouldn't I rated it a little lower basically. But mm. it's definitely worthwhile. Yeah, that's fair. Um, just for me, I, I love Van Gogh, as you said. Uh, was, how was my pronunciation there? <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> um, so I, I love the artist. Um, so I really enjoy the museum. It just explains his life so well, and it has so many of his top paintings that you've seen before but not in person. So I, th- I thought it was a fantastic museum. I agree that maybe it gets overshadowed by the Reichs, but if you really like Van Gogh or Precious art, then I say A+. I really love it. Um, next up we have... The Stedelijk Museum, which is a modern art museum. Eva, what do you think about this one? Um, a B. I, it might also be influenced by my personal preference because I'm not as much into modern art, but also I've seen modern art museums in other places in the world that have been better. And I think if you have only limited time in Amsterdam, I would skip this one if you have more time, then then I would go. Yeah, I sort of agree. I think it's worth taking a little walk through. The upstairs collections has a couple of sort of famous paintings, some gems. And the outside is cool. It's a really interesting architecture. It's They have a glass add-on to this really old building, so it's nice to look at it from the outside. But I agree, unless you're really into modern art, I don't think it's a must-see. So I'm going to also give it a, a B, maybe a B to B minus. Okay, so our last museum we have is the Museum of Dutch Resistance. Ava, you said you hadn't been there, but I have it. It's a really well-curated exhibit. It's inspiring. It's on the resistance movements during World War II, the Dutch resistance movements, and it's an incredible true story. And the museum has interactives and artifacts. It's just a really great uh, tribute to these really inspiring stories. So I would give this an A. I think you, you got to see this if you're in Amsterdam. So let's move on to some historical sites, and let's start with the Rembrandt House. Uh, Eva, what do you think about the Rembrandt House? Do I grade this too? Yeah. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Rembrandt House. This is also a very long time ago that I've been there. I think if you want to see things of Rembrandt, then again, I keep saying this, but the Rijksmuseum has like his most famous paintings. Um, but this is where he lived for a part of his life. So it might be interesting if you're interested in that aspect as well. But if you are mostly interested in his art, then then I would go to the Rijksmuseum first. And if you have more time, you can go there. Yeah, I agree with that. So what's your grade overall? Ah, uh, B? B plus, B plus. Okay, yeah, I would give it a B. I think that, again, if you really like 
if you really like Rembrandt, then it's then it's worth going to. There's some amazing etchings um, that were are really mind blowing, and I I can't even believe how he did them. And I, I didn't really know that they were out there because you always see his paintings. So the etchings are amazing. And I think it's cool to be in his house, but there's nothing really actually to see in his house. It's sort of a lot of recreation, and there's not that much to see about the actual house. But I would, I would, I would give it a B overall. Uh, so next we have the Anne Frank house. Uh, this is the hideout of the famous Anne Frank and her family during World War II. Uh, one of the most popular sites in Amsterdam. Ava, what's your grade of the Anne Frank house? I think I'd give it a B plus for the reason that it's very interesting to see where she hid and you can see her the whole build of the house and how how they made it like a closet how she was behind how the door behind the closet was behind the closet and how every room what what it looked like um but then that's that's the only part you see so it's it's worthwhile to see and it's definitely very interesting um and maybe sort of a must if you go but on the other hand it's more i grew up with this so i've been there a lot of times uh so maybe that's why yeah, I definitely. I definitely feel like you can have that effect. Um, for me in New York, there's some sites that I've been to so many times that it doesn't really have that wow factor anymore. Um, but personally, when I went to the Anne Frank House, I was really inspired, um, just because it's such an important story of yeah. World War II. True. Yeah, and I think that people who don't know much about the Holocaust uh, will still be compelled by the story because it's such a good one. And they have this new modern section sort of at the end where they have a, vi- a le- sort of a legacy video of various famous people. Um, talking about Anne Frank and talking about the story. I thought that that was really inspiring too. So definitely, I would give it an A. I think it's really important to see. But get tickets uh, online way in advance because the crowds are crazy, as you said. Yeah. So last we have uh, the Begeinhof. I, I hope I pronounced that somewhat close to correctly. Um, Begeinhof. Begeinhof. Um, yeah. So this is a historical area with a cathedral. And there's, there's some gardens. And I would say that unless you're really a history buff, it's, there's not too much to look at, sort of just a bunch of old houses. Um, that was sort of my opinion. But if you really like history, this is a popular site, um, and you might you might like to go. So I would say C overall. One of the things just to mention for there, um, the cathedral is is like a hit. It's like a small hidden. It's hidden in the house. It's not. It's not like very out there because Catholicism was not something people did most because it was Protestant in Holland. So it was. It was hidden, the mm. cathedral. Yeah, yeah, um, that's really interesting. So that, yeah. again, that, there is a lot of history there to explore if, if you're interested. Yeah, that's a, that's a good point. Okay, so next let's talk about activities to do in Amsterdam. And first let's talk about the Heineken Brewery. Ava, what, what are your thoughts on the Heineken Brewery and what's your grade? Um, C. Like, I mean, it's, it's, really, inter- it's really fun if, you, if you're into beer and into things. But on the other hand, it's, it's very commercial and they... You go in, they tell you a little bit about about the beer, and you see the factory, and then you get some free drinks, and then you leave. So it's it's not like the best activity. On the other hand, if you are up for just some fun, it's like nice. <laughs> I, I agree 100%. I think um, it's kind of like an amusement park. Um, it's fun, but it's it's not the most meaningful experience you'll have in Amsterdam for sure. Yeah, exactly. Um, it's also a little expensive, and it sort of feels like you're in a Heineken commercial, almost. Yeah. Um, so I would also agree C. I think you nailed it. Next, we have uh, Vondel Park. Uh, what, would you, what grade would you give to Vondel Park? An A, for sure. Um, it's like a big park in the middle of the city, and you can, um, in the summer, you can relax. There are a lot of people hang out, but it's also a like a place where like people bike through it like it's it connects to different different parts of the city so you would see a lot of people biking there there's a lot of grass a lot of fountains a lot of water and you can picnic you can do anything it's really nice uh, yeah i also agree that it's a great park i uh, give it an a minus i think that you know if, if the weather's nice it's it's the best place to ride your bike in the city my sister and i went for a run uh when we stay in amsterdam in vondel park and that was that was one of the highlights of our trip and there's a huge biking culture in, in amsterdam do you want to talk about that a little bit yeah, so basically I grew up biking my whole life um, to school, to different places. It's people downtown, hardly anyone takes takes the car downtown because it's really impractical. And it's really nice because it gives, for example, uh, teenagers, it gives them a lot of freedom because already from a, from a young age you can 
start going to friends on your own because you bike, you don't need the car. You can go to your sports activities alone. And that gives gives you a lot of freedom and that like really adds also to the Dutch culture that they give a lot of freedom to their children in general. And that's just a really nice environment. It's also very convenient to just get everywhere by bike and it's something yeah, I don't know anything else actually. And it's always surprising that in other cities it's much harder. Uh, or most cities, not all, um, to get around in yeah. that tent. I mean, for me, I'm from New York. I mean, they've added more bike paths and, and bike accommodations recently, but yeah, it's, it's all subways. So I, that, that's really foreign to me, and it's really interesting that you grew up in there. Yeah. Okay, so next we have the Albert Count Market. Uh, again, pronunciation maybe was off. <laughs> Albert Count Market. Count Market. So what, what's your grade for this one? Um, B+. Plus. Okay. Uh, it's, like, it's a really, it's really nice. It's an outdoor market um, that is there every day, and there, um, there are a lot of vendors that ha- that's that's where they have been for years. Um, and so, um, it's all. But there's also a lot of commercial. It's it's becoming a little bit more commercialized. They have like clothes and food and bags and flowers, like anything that that's on the market it's like very it's a special place because you don't have those kind of things everywhere um so it's like nice to walk around it walk around and yeah i I agree it's a great outdoor market Uh, i think you you really said everything i agree b plus and then there's also a different market the flower market what do you think about this one you mean the one like near the um, like near the shopping street near the kalferstraat yeah yeah Ah, okay um, I'd say B minus. Um, it's like there's a lot of flower stands. Um, they sell a lot of flowers, but it's also very touristy. Uh, in a way, they sell a lot of other things. Um, it's nice. It's like very small. So if you are downtown and you happen to to be near, then you can walk around it on your way somewhere else. That's nice to see the flowers, but it's also not not like a must. Yeah, I, I agree, but I, I would give it a B plus just because it's convenient okay. and. It's sort of it's not that hard to sort of just go over there because um, it's close right. to other sites and walk through. Um, you can see what plants they're selling, and there's some cool plants like Venus flytraps, some cacti. So I think it's I think it's worth going to just because it's convenient and and it's it's pretty cool. And then what about canal boating? I didn't do this while I was in Amsterdam, um, so I'm going to defer to you on this one. What grade would you give to canal boating? Um, I'd give it an A. I think it's a really good experience to um, see the city from the water, and there's a lot of water, so um. It's like it gives a really nice view and it's like really relaxing to go like that. What I usually recommend is not to take well, it's different. There's so you can take either you can rent um water bicycles um and tour around on like on your own, which is kind of fun and fun experience. Um and another thing you can do is uh go on a boat tour for an hour. And you sit in a big boat and they explain what you see and where they are, which is also nice. Um, I, Yeah, it depends, like, what you're up for. If you want some activity and some exercise uh, while you're at it, this, it's really nice to to go on your own and, and rent the water bikes. On the other hand, you might get a little bit more out of it if you go on the um, boat tour. So that's uh, something you yeah. Um, so it's just so it's a great overall, but just sort of depends um, on what you're looking for for whether to do yeah. each of those. Okay, great. So that's it for the sites. Um, that should be a pretty solid overview of most of the big sites. And now let's talk about Dutch food. So I'm going to okay. list a bunch of foods, and for each one, sort of you can tell me what it is, and also whether you think it's worth eating while you're in Amsterdam. So first, stroop waffles. Uh, waffles. Um, yeah, they're great. Um, it's like it's like a waffle. A wafer, like thin, two thin wafers with um, with a syrup in between. You can get, if you go to the Albert Kuyp Markt, you can get uh, fresh ones, which those are really delicious. But even the ones in the supermarket are um, are good. Um, yeah, that's like one of the staple Dutch cookies that 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 you should eat when you're there. Yeah, I agree. You got to try it. It is available in the supermarkets, as you said, and it's better fresh. Um, but even the supermarket ones are better than the supermarket ones that you'll get anywhere else in the world. So definitely worth trying. Next, we have Heineken beer. I've heard that this tastes better, supposedly, inside the Netherlands than, than elsewhere. Uh, what do you think about 
trying beer in the Netherlands, Heineken specifically? Um, I mean, the Dutch are really good at are really big in beer. So that's definitely an experience to, if you like beer, I would recommend it. Okay. And next we have Dutch pancakes. Uh, how are these different from American pancakes? Do you want to explain a little bit? Yeah. So in Dutch, we call them pannenkoeken. <laughs> um, <laughs> that's, a, that's a great name. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> it's basically, it's, I would describe it as something in between crepes and pancakes the the thickness of them is like something in between and we eat them with different things they eat either sweet or savory so um there's like a, a strope which apple strope which is like uh apple syrup it's like a dot i think it's pretty unique and that people put on it um there are people eat meat on it cheese on it um apples um or just um sugar but then there's also puffertjes which are very small round pancakes like very small like in, they they give them in a in a bag with many of them and with um with sugar um and those are also very good and i would also recommend those okay great next up we have cheese Cheese is bigger than Netherlands. So which cheeses do you recommend trying? Uh, so there are a couple of different kind of cheeses. So you have uh, young, first of all, young cheeses and old cheeses. So the old cheeses have been, are older um, and they're more bitter, but also very good. And then I think any kind of cheese like Gouda, um, anything you can see there, there uh, you can buy it in the supermarket, but you can also there are specialized cheese stores, um, so you can go there and eat it. And other thing, other kind of cheese that is also really good is goat cheese. But it's, how do you say, it's like hard, it's not soft goat cheese. It's like, it's similar to yellow cheese that I, what I just described, but then goat cheese. It It's white in color and it's also delicious. Yeah, that that's really interesting because we don't have that, at least as far as I've seen in the United States, uh, hard goat cheese. So definitely try that. And am I wrong that there are some cities in the Netherlands that are named after cheeses? Yeah. Well, Gouda, or Gouda, how you, you would pronounce it, I guess, uh, because the cheese is from there, basically. Oh, so, so, the, sort of the, so it's the other way around. The, the cheese is named yeah, after exactly. the place. That's okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that makes sense. Okay, so great. Next we have Indonesian food. Um, Indonesian food in Amsterdam is amazing because Indonesia used to be a Dutch colony. So, so can you talk a little about Indonesian food? Uh, what's what's your favorite yeah, place? Yeah, it's really good. Um, there's a famous thing is satay sauce, which is basically a peanut sauce um, that they put in a lot of things. What you should order is rice tafel. It's like rice table, maybe easier to uh, remember. Um, and then you get a lot of things to choose from, like a lot of small, of every dish you get like a small sample and that's really nice. And you can share it with each other. Nice. A specific restaurant, uh, Contil de Tiger. Do you, do you know it? Is that how did I pronounce it correctly? Oh, I know which one you mean. I don't. Tiger. Um... Yeah, that one. Oh, Tiger and Contel. <laughs> oh, Contel and, ti- and the Tiger. Contel and the Tiger. Contel de Tiger. And the Tiger. <laughs> Got it. So I, I definitely recommend if you're looking for Indonesian food, that's a specific place that's great. Next up on our food list, we have Dutch fries. Um, what's your and you could put a lot of toppings on these. What's your favorite topping personally? So something that is not necessarily my favorite topping, but you should definitely try um, is peanut sauce with mayonnaise and onions. <laughs> okay, uh, very specific, but I'll take your word for it. I didn't try that when I was there, but. <laughs> It, it sounds interesting. Yeah. Uh, next up, we have herring. Uh, this is big in, in Amsterdam, right? Yeah. Uh, it's it's herring that has been um, salted. It's salted herring. They catch the herring once a year. So every year in the beginning, it's it's like a big deal. All the fish shops have signs. There is new herring. Um, and then they salt it for the whole year. So you can get it all year round. Um, and it's a very – it's very something specific – specifically Dutch because it's very different from the herring that you buy in like the sour herring that you buy in cans. It's like something completely different. So definitely worth a try. Nice. And then last on our food list, we have stampot. 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 Yeah. (laughs) 
So that's something I would less recommend to you. It's it's um, mashed potatoes with carrots or other vegetables mixed with it. Um, that's like a very Dutch, typical Dutch meal. I would skip it if you can. I mean, it's not bad, but it's also not something you would have to try. Okay, yeah, and it seems like there's there's plenty of other foods that you you'll have time to try or, or you want to get in there. So Stumpot yeah. is, is a skip relative to the other ones. Yeah. Um, okay, so last the last thing we're going to do with Ava today is we're going to uh, talk about day trips. Um, so if you're only in Amsterdam for three days or less, there's plenty to do in the city. Um, but if you have more time, there's some great day trips that are pretty easily accessible from Amsterdam. Um, so we're going to play In a Word, where I'm going to ask Ava to describe the day trip for us in one word. So let's start with Leiden. What's your word for Leiden? Um, cute and small. Okay. Am I supposed to give one word? <laughs> uh, no, that, that cute and small, it's, it's, it's fine. Okay. It's pretty flexible. <laughs> Um, and, and why would you use those words? What what, what do you think about Leiden? Um, it's a it's a, a university town. It has it's it you can walk through it pretty fast, um, or like it doesn't it doesn't require that much time. It's close to Amsterdam, only half an hour by train, and it has some water, some old buildings, good atmosphere, and it's pretty. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's really nice. I would even say it's legendary. Uh, that's my word. <laughs> if the canals and the botanical gardens aren't enough to earn the word legendary, um, you mentioned the university Einstein regularly taught there, so that's cool. And Leiden was home to Rembrandt and to people who sailed on the Mayflower. So it's just a great combination of history and beauty and I, I would say legendary. Next up, we have the Hague. What's your word for the Hague? Art and government. <laughs> okay, so Sorry, you're doing, you're, you're doing the two word. word. You're doing the two word thing. That, <laughs> yeah. to, that works too. And, and so what, what, why, why would you, why'd you pick those words? So the Hague, first of all, is also really pretty. It has uh, all the um, embassies, and also the government is located in the Hague, and it's ve- it's a beautiful scenery. The whole the government and the water around the government buildings, mm-hmm. um, and there's also one of a very good art museum there. Um, the oh, sorry. House. Yeah, sorry, the Mallet House. Uh, and that's very worthwhile. It has it's a very it's a very small museum, but it's comparable to the Rijksmuseum in Amsterdam. Um, the quality of the art and the the important artists that that they have there, um, and so it's definitely worthwhile. Yeah, the Mar- the Marit House is amazing. It has some really famous paintings, like the Girl with the Pearl Earring by Vermeer, and and just a, uh, it's like the Rijks, where it just has so much great Dutch Golden Age art. So I would say the Hague is essential um, for that museum alone. I mean, there's also an, an M.C. Escher Museum, so if you like his work, I think that's worth going to also. Next up on our list, we have Delft. Uh, what's your word for Delft and why? Can I say the same as Leiden? <laughs> sure, go for it. Um, so it's basically, it's, it's, it ha- it's very similar to Leiden. It has the same kind of atmosphere and water and old houses and small town. Also university. I think it's even prettier than Leiden in a way. It has it has some charm. Also, if you you're a Vermeer fan, he like painted uh, some paintings on Delft, so that might be interest of oh, yeah, interest. That's, that's that's very cool. Yeah, I would say it's quaint, uh, which is sort of along the lines of what you were saying. It really looks the way the same way that it does in all the old paintings. So it really has that old that sort of traditional feel. And yeah, cute, as, which was which was your word. So next on our list we have Harlem. Ava, what, what's your word for Harlem? Um, portraity. Um, I, <laughs> why, why would you say portraity? <laughs> that might sound a little strange, but um, I associated it with the Franz Hals Museum, which is uh, one of the painters that painted a lot of portraits. Also, there are some pa- Dutch famous paintings that that have like that painted parts of Harlem. Um, so that's mostly what I think of. It's a it's a very cute, also a very cute. Um, place um, yeah i agree the halls museum is the is the highlight here and his portraits are are his f- most famous work so i do agree with your word i would say it's charming it's small some old buildings and and obviously the art is also worth worth seeing it's the closest to amsterdam which is nice and last but not least we have kuchenhof uh what's your word for <laughs> kuchenhof it was my uh, pronunciation for- bad <laughs> kuchenhof kuchenhof yeah um flowery uh it's a place a lot of flowers, a lot of tulips. It's only in the season that you can see it. 
Uh, one thing to mention, though, is that if you don't necessarily want to go there, you can also just drive um, along the countryside in the right season. Um, you will also see a lot of tulip fields in the wild. Well, not the wild, but people that, that have them planted in their fields. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Like a, in the right season, there's there's flowers all over the country. Uh, but this is really the best flower show in the world. Uh, so for that reason, I would say it's botanical, uh, similar to what you were saying. If you want more detail about the day trips we just discussed or suggestions for more, then definitely check out our blog post on Amsterdam Day Trips. So let, let's also, before you go, um, you want to teach me and, and our listeners a few Dutch words. Um, yeah, people, sure. Yeah, uh, people in the Netherlands speak English, so if you're traveling there, you shouldn't have a too hard a time getting around. Um, but you will impress uh, the locals with some vocab. So you want to give me a couple? Yeah. So, hagelslag. Oh, boy. I... <laughs> <laughs> hagelslag. Yeah, good job. What does um, that mean? It's um, chocolate sprinkles, but like from real chocolate, not sugar, um, that you put on bread. Um, mostly children eat it, but also adults. And you can buy it in the supermarket. So That sounds really good. <laughs> <laughs> and then is there is there another word that you think is useful to know? Um, bedankt, which means thank you. Bedankt. Yeah. Yeah, that's definitely useful. You'll probably find yourself saying that a lot, so that's good to know. Last question before you leave, very last. Why is everything orange in the Netherlands? <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, so the royal family, their last name is Van Oranje. Um, or that's part of their last name, and Oranje means orange. And so one of their ancestors had this name, and they kept it, and so that's like the official official color of the Netherlands, basically. Very interesting. Yeah, I just noticed everything. The soccer jersey, it, it's just all over. Um, you, you really, yeah. you're going to see a lot of orange when you're there, but that's interesting, that, interesting to know where it comes from. And how do people feel about the royalty in Amsterdam? Sort of how does it impact you know, the people, how does it impact the culture, and how do people feel about it? So I think most people are quite neutral. They just grew up with it and they celebrate their birthday birthdays on like Queens and or now it's changed to King's Day. There are like some people that are vocal about wanting them not to be there, but I think that's not really an issue. But on the other end, it's also not how it's in England or something that people are extremely excited every time there's something related to them to the royalty so it's like yeah it's something we grew, grew up with and we just live with it basically <laughs> i don't know yeah you're, you're yeah. definitely right about the the british royalty yeah and people in america also seem to be sort of right. obsessed with, with following them or what i was alluding to what i've like seen in the states about the british royalty mm. ava thank you so much for taking the time to talk to us about oh, your home pleasure. city of amsterdam this is great if you're listening, you can find the links to all the things we talked about on our website. Thanks, Ava. You're welcome. My pleasure. Now, before we get into some practical planning tips, we're going to do a segment called How About That? The Netherlands is the number one worldwide exporter of flowers. Today, you can walk into your local flower shop and pick out a few Dutch tulip stems for a few dollars. But did you know that at the height of tulip mania in the 1600s, a single bulb could cost 2,500 florins? That is a lot of florins, especially since a yearly salary was about 150. Just to put it in perspective, in modern currency, that's roughly $250,000 for a tulip. Why were people paying so much for a flower? Well, remember, in the 1600s, the Netherlands were at the top of the trading game. Tulips were brought over from the Ottoman Empire in the east and were totally different from any other flower Europeans had ever seen. Because they were unique, especially the ones with implanted viruses causing streaked multicolored petals, they became a status symbol. The Dutch became convinced that rich people around the world would be ordering Dutch tulips and would be willing to pay any price. Tulip bulbs only bloom for about one week each year, so the Dutch started writing contracts to trade bulbs in April after they finished blooming for that year. But then those contracts containing the rights to buy tulips were brought and sold by third parties, creating a speculative market, not unlike the housing market pre-2008 in the United States. It was called Weintandel, literally wind trade, because nothing physical was actually being traded, just the rights to trade the bulbs. People made and lost thousands of florins in the blink of an eye. By the winter of 1637, some bulbs were brought and sold 10 times a day without ever physically moving. When buyers stopped showing up to auctions in Harlem, 
probably because of the bubonic plague, the market bubble burst, and the people who had invested so much in those contracts lost everything. That's right, the first ever speculative economic bubble was created by flowers. Okay, so if you're in the planning stages of your trip, keep listening, because the next and final section will be a review, along with a bunch of practical tips and money-saving suggestions to make it all happen. If you're like me, you're probably thinking, this is a European city, and this trip is going to be expensive. Well, it doesn't have to be. First, the museum cart is a necessity. It costs 60 euros, but covers pretty much everything you'll want to see. Admission to the big museums is almost 20 euros a piece, so if you plan to see more than three sites, the cart is worth it, especially since it allows you to cut lines, which can be insanely long during peak tourist season. Second, but also important, is the transit card. Driving in a city is kind of a nightmare because the streets are so narrow, but the tram system is great. You'll save money by buying a transit card at a yellow kiosk when you arrive at the train station or airport. The card itself costs a few euros to buy, but if you plan on taking the tram a lot and or taking day trips on the excellent, cheap, intuitive national train system, it'll save you time and money. The transit card works on pretty much every form of transportation. It would be like having a card in the U.S. that works on New York City subways, Greyhound buses, and Amtrak trains. If you're staying only in Amsterdam and the weather's nice and you're planning to walk everywhere, the car might not be worth it, and you can buy slightly more expensive tickets on an individual basis. 3. From the airport, you can take a train to the central station in Amsterdam. It's a 20-minute ride and costs only a few euros, plus the train station is right in the airport arrivals hall. You can also hop on one of the many buses that stop outside the airport to get more directly to where you're headed in the city. On Google Maps, you can search the best way to get from the airport to your hotel. Having given you transportation tips, the best thing you could do in a beautiful city like Amsterdam is walk as much as possible. Each neighborhood has its own feel and style. Travel expert Rick Steves has amazing audio walking tours that will take you around the best neighborhoods in the city. Amsterdam in general is an extremely safe city. As for where you want to stay, a general rule of thumb is that if you're close to the canal called Prinsengracht, you're close to some of the big sites and probably in a pretty safe neighborhood. Where you want to stay depends on what you're looking for. Each neighborhood offers a different vibe. The best place to stay is probably around Vondel Park, especially if you're planning on getting an early start in nearby museums or if morning runs in the park sound appealing to you as they did to me. Just make sure you're staying around the east side of the park. That's where the people are. Jordan is a fun, artsy neighborhood where a lot of students live and there's a great cafe scene. The central historical area actually isn't my favorite because it's so crowded and touristy, but it does put you within walking distance of all the sites, including the train station. If you stay in the historical center, make sure to look up where the red zone district is and stay outside that perimeter since that area can be a little dicey at night. If those three are out of your price range, the pipe is a little more affordable and residential with plenty of good places to eat and a beautiful park and it's still walkable to most of the sites. The Oost neighborhood is a little hit or miss, but worth looking into if you're on a tight budget. There's also some movies and books that I recommend looking at before you go, and they might give you a little perspective on the city or just be interesting and fun when you go to the city, and you can sort of look at places and say, oh, I remember that from this book or this movie. So The Girl with the Pearl Earring is both a book and a movie. Goldfinch is based on a painting in the Moritz House, Comedy in a Minor Key, Diary of Anne Frank, and one of my favorite books, The Fault in Our Stars. The characters go to Amsterdam and they take a trip there. And that was fun because I went to Amsterdam just after I read that book. So that's all for today. I'm Levi Cabas and thanks for listening. If you like this podcast, please subscribe on iTunes or Google Play. Don't forget to check out our blog at planetpodcast.com, especially our most recent post about day trips from Amsterdam. Today's episode was produced by Tal and Shoshana Akabas. Thanks for listening. <laughs>